This is the morning office for March 14th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 106, verses 6 and 7 and 19 to 23. We have sinned as our forebears did, we have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt they did not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshipped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely, they have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation." But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, It was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The Word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. My thought on silence today begins again with one of my authors who says, silence is the outer wall we must build to protect the inner edifice. That for me brings up questions. What exactly is this outer wall of silence keeping out? And what is this inner edifice? I suppose those answers will be different for each one of us. Certainly part of what silence is keeping out is that insinuating voice that comes into our heads telling us that we, we can't, we mustn't, we are unable, we are less than we need to be. Somehow God has deserted us and will not sustain us in the work that God has given us to do. That voice of Satan, to be honest, that comes into our heads. That, I think, is part of what silence can keep out. The inner edifice then presumably is 
the soul God intends each one of us to have, that perfect life that God desires for us that is so often marred by our encounters with the world, but that perhaps is better protected when surrounded by the silence that keeps out the noise and confusion of the world, at least for a little while. I ask your prayers for the day, for the world, and for the church. Pray today for whatever is on your heart, the needs that only you know, those people whom only you are praying for, those concerns that are so close to your heart that you cannot share them with anyone. Offer them to God today and see what perhaps God will do with them. Pray also for the world. Pray that peace will reign and that humanity will find some way to live more completely in the image that God intends for us as the beloved community. And pray for the church, that it may model that beloved community for the world, giving it, giving it an example, however imperfect, of what God intends as a way for humanity to live together. Almighty and most merciful God, drive from us all weakness of body, mind, and spirit, that being restored to wholeness, we may with free hearts become what you intend us to be and accomplish what you want us to do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.